Good morning, Internet. This week, an article suggesting a PS5 Pro is in development and could release late next year, while simultaneously not containing any actual information about the PS5 Pro, did stir up a conversation on if a PS5 Pro is wanted so soon. Here, I'm joined by Kitten to continue that conversation. Oh, it's delightful to be back. It really is delightful. PS5 Pro... Why? Well, it's quite queerly, but I believe it's all to do with people looking for patterns. The PS4 Pro coming three years after the PS4, you know, around the same time as the Slim, and we all know the PS5 revisions are surely coming. So it stands to reason why someone would believe the Pro would quickly follow. So you think there is potential there for the pattern to follow last gen, and we could indeed see a PS5 Pro model towards the end of next year. Oh, darling, there's always potential there if it makes money. And that dream boat Jim Ryan said at the time that the PS4 Pro was exceeding all sales expectations, leaving him convinced players want consoles to follow the Apple model. So there's every chance we'll see a Pro model and soon. And why not a Pro Pro model after that, huh? But there's two different questions, you see. Will it come next year? And should it come next year? The pattern this generation is already completely different from the last, my dear. Yes, it really doesn't feel like the generation's properly started for either console. Exactly. When the PS4 Pro hit, the base console was almost 60 million in, and had games each year demonstrating its capabilities. Some of those games still remaining examples of the best looking games of the generation. Where as it stands, the PS5 has only had five dedicated games from Sony within the same time period. Only one you could possibly argue demonstrates the potential of the console. All the other games demonstrating Sony's reluctance to drop the PS4. Of course, it's normal for there to be some crossover at the start of a generation. Well, yes, there's usually a couple of years of cross-gen support by third party. But the platform holder are offering very limited support, preferring to focus the majority of their output on the dedicated new hardware. Whereas this generation has seen the opposite. Of course, the stock issues have no doubt contributed to this increased cross-gen support. Yes, people have only just been able to easily get hold of this two-and-a-half-year console. So it really does become quite a slap in the face if they were to release a PS5 Pro next year. And I enjoy a slap as much as the next kitty, but darling sweetie, please warm me up a little bit first. Because with Sony reportedly supporting the PS4 till 2025, there really is no need for a Pro model, my dear. And of course, this year should see dedicated support from Sony too, notably from Spider-Man. And if Spider-Man does struggle, and it's clear we've been oversold the potential of the PS5 console, then by all means, the conversation is the right time to discuss the need for a Pro. And maybe it is the case that we have been overpromised the potential of these consoles, because what is the one thing they both brought to this generation as standard? Uh, 70 pound games. No compromises in the form of options, my love. We're being made to choose between performance and graphics, even in these cross-gen games. And because we're so delightfully stupid, we've applauded them for giving us these options rather than optimizing the games to take full advantage of the hardware anyway. Yes, we have seemed to have set ourselves up for more options going forward. But then I guess the benefit of pro consoles is it eliminates the need for compromise or create more options. And that is assuming the hardware is even taken advantage of. Is it not the reason why Xbox is full RDA2 and Fidelity FX and all those bells and whistles are not fully utilized in third party because it's not on PlayStation? I mean, what makes us confident that a PS5 Pro with say RDNA3 would be? And my dear, we also need to remember the real purpose of the PS4 Pro. Which was... <laughs> to capitalize on the popularity of 4K TVs, my love. Indeed. Thank you, Kitten. In other news, after the CMA reveals six other companies within the gaming industry are in favor of the Microsoft APK deal, Sony once again throws its newly acquired online FPS franchise Destiny under the bus. 
stating it cannot hope to compete with Call of Duty. In fact, none of Sony's AAA award-winning number one selling games can. And they are surely doomed if Microsoft owns Call of Duty, regardless of it still being on PlayStation. Sony is citing one of the reasons for this being Call of Duty's apparent 300 million budget, whilst they only spend a redacted three-figured million on the likes of God of War. Microsoft responded to this by basically blowing a raspberry and making crying motions with their hands. Microsoft also continued its pledge to make Sony look as unreasonable as possible by offering 10-year deals to everyone's favourite cloud streaming providers Ubitas and Boosteroid as well as your grandmother's stair lift and everything in between. Toasty! And once she gets up those stairs, the good news continues, with Resident Evil 4 Remake getting rave reviews. Though, in somewhat anticlimactic fashion, is the realization that the best games this generation aren't actually from this generation. Hopefully that will soon change. Now, looking to the future, here's Twittery Corner. This week on Twitter Recorder, we're going to go through some reactions on this tweet. Oh shit. It's just a money grab technique at this point. Not a real upgrade. Honestly, we don't need a PS5 Pro, we just need upgradable or new update on PS5. Where we can have full backwards compatibility so we can play PS1, PS2 games. PS3 games, not just streaming off that PlayStation Plus service. But why? Nah, bruh, you they just got the regular PS5 out, on a regular basis. Shaking my head. Damn, I literally just got a PS5. And so did most people. LOL, this is so pathetic of Sony. Wow. The generation hasn't started properly, and people want a pro. Shaking my head. I don't think launching a PS5 Pro in 2024 would be a good idea. I mean, the console has only been readily available for a few months now. With so many cross-generation games, I can't say that software needs something more powerful to run on either. In short, too soon. So I keep my PS4 till they're done remixing and cash grabbing. Got it. Just not needed. So many games are still cross gen, I'm not getting a new one near the most out of the new boxes. So excited for the PS5 Pro. I can't wait to get my hands on one and see the new games that come out. See my homepage, please. Okay, let's just do that. <laughs> Microsoft has filed suit and released a Series S upgraded one, and Series X too. Me personally, I like this idea, give people more power if they want it, and are willing to pay. I wouldn't mind the Series S Pro or something similar with a little more power in it. As for the PS5, I don't think the Pro version is even needed. And the Series S Pro would be the Series X. Let's go! I was scared we wouldn't get a Pro this generation, but a Pro is a must. I can't stand these dynamic performance modes. Give me 4K60. This room is real like the new standard model with its detachable disk drive that Sony announced. Oh wait, didn't happen, lol. Hey, eh? I hate this console generation. The Xbox 360 PS3 days were so much better for me personally. Yeah, they were quite good. No point in this if the PS4 is still being supported. I just wonder what this will have that the PS5 doesn't. Well, the PS5 case for a start. Zero reasons to do this considering all the games were still launching on last gen. With no signs of stopping. No point in doing this when every game still comes out on PS4. WTF! Still yet to get actual PS5 games that aren't given by the old PS4. Lame if true, the PS5 is literally just a PS4 Pro Pro. Perfect for the zero games it has on it. Until devs start making games specifically for the next gen, it's pointless making a Pro anyway. Hopefully it'll be less ugly. Nah, clickbait. Why? This year has no games, lol. We barely had PS5 games. There is no real next gen games. And now PS5 Pro? Why? Just for God of War, Spider Man, and All Horizon? Actually, PS4 games? 
It was already late. LOL. Ray tracing is transformative in games, and we'll just see more and more of it, so this is great news for anyone who wants better looking games. And let's face it, this is probably going to be a bit longer generation than the previous one. So then why introduce the pro so early in the generation? Feels like next gen hasn't even really started, and they're already screwing over people who bought a PS5. You know that thing you bought, that we really haven't made many games specifically for? Well it's already obsolete. Buy our new more expensive version. Has a PS5 even released yet? And that's where we'll leave it this week. This has been Twittery Corner. Depending on when you are, where you are, and who you are, good morning, good evening, and good night. Power consumption varies a lot from game to game. When I play God of War on my PS4 Pro, I know the power consumption is high just by the fan noise. But power isn't simply about engine quality. It's about the minutia of what's being displayed and how. It's counterintuitive, but processing dense geometry typically consumes less power than processing simple geometry, which is, I suspect, why Horizon's map screen, with its low triangle count, makes my PS4 Pro heat up so much. So, after much discussion, we decided to go with a very different direction on PlayStation 5. We built a GPU with 36 CUs. Mind you, our DNA 2 CUs are large. Each has 62% more transistors than the CUs we were using on PlayStation 4. So, if we compare transistor counts, 36 RDNA 2 CUs equates to roughly 58 PlayStation 4 CUs. It is a fairly sizable GPU. Then we went with a variable frequency strategy for PlayStation 5, which is to say we continuously run the GPU and CPU in boost mode. We supply a generous amount of electrical power and then increase the frequency of GPU and CPU until they reach the capabilities of the system's cooling solution. It's a completely different paradigm. Rather than running at constant frequency and letting power vary based on the workload, we run at essentially constant power and let the frequency ba vary based on the workload. So how fast can we run the GPU and CPU with this strategy? The simplest approach would be to look at the actual temperature of the silicon die and throttle the frequency on that basis. But that won't work. It fails to create a consistent PlayStation 5 experience. It wouldn't do to run a console slower simply because it was in a hot room. So rather than look at the actual temperature of the silicon die, we look at the activities that the GPU and CPU are performing and set the frequencies on that basis, which makes everything deterministic and repeatable. While we're at it, we also use AMD's Smart Shift technology and send any unused power from the CPU to the GPU so it can squeeze out a few more pixels. The benefits of this, this strategy are quite large. Running a GPU at 2 GHz was looking like an unreachable target with the old fixed frequency strategy. With this new paradigm, we're, we're able to run way over that. In fact, we have to cap the GPU frequency at 2.23 GHz so that we can guarantee that the on-chip logic operates properly. 36 CUs at 2.23 GHz is 10.3 teraflops, and we expect the GPU to spend most of its time at or close to that frequency and performance. Similarly, running the CPU at 3 GHz was causing headaches with the old strategy. But now we can run it as high as 3.5 GHz. In fact, it spends most of its time at that frequency. That doesn't mean all games will be running at 2.23 GHz and 3.5 GHz. When that worst case game arrives, it will run at a lower clock speed, but not too much lower. To reduce power by 10%, it only takes a couple of percent reduction in frequency, so I'd expect any down clocking to be pretty minor. All things considered, the change to a variable frequency approach will show significant gains for PlayStation gamers. <laughs>